bum Hey everybody. Last Outrider here with part three of Who Are the Thousand Sons? This is the big one, people, where I describe to you how time travel is going to work in 40k. Let's get to it. Exile of the Thousand Sons. As the echo of the rubric faded, Magnus the Red himself descended from his tower to confront Araman and his cabal. Some say that in that moment, Araman pronounced himself satisfied, and that Magnus's wrath was only diverted by the intervention of other powers. In a realm of lies, the truth cannot be known. But the outcome of that last meeting is certain. Araman and all of those who stood with him were banished from the planet of sorcerers for all eternity. Within the eye of terror, that what one soul experiences in an eye blink, another might experience as many lifetimes. Within such a realm of paradox, questions such as loyalty and truth dissolve in the screams of delusions made real. To walk the stars in such a place is to be walking the path of chaos, whether it be to glory or utter destruction, no one knows. Legions have died there and have been reborn. Mighty lords have become slaves, and the mortals have ascended to sit beside the dark gods of chaos themselves. Yes, they actually said that. In this realm, Araman walked alone, cut off from the legion he had sought to save, doomed to an existence on the margins of insanity. Some say, in this time, he lived over 9,000 lives of mortals, tricked truths from the lips of demons, and became lost in the paths of dreams. How long Araman wandered the Eye of Terror after his banishment? is a question that can have no answer. For in the warp, time is a fragile thing. No matter the truth, Araman rose from the ashes of the rubric and the shame of exile with renewed purpose. Understanding and knowledge had always been the fire at the core of Araman's soul. And so it remained. The rubric had failed, but its intent was untarnished. And what would have been the cause of its failure? Except for imperfect knowledge. With pure understanding and perfect knowledge, Araman could complete the salvation of his legion. Now I'm going to go and jump back to one of my other videos because this would definitely be the time to mention it. I believe that the Legion of the Damned are the Rubrikai of the Thousand Sons. You can go see my Legion of the Damned video series where I explain that more completely, but I'll do it here too. You see, the Rubrikai, as we know, are the spirits of the Thousand Sons trapped within their armor. Araman is out there trying to save them. So this leads to the question, what will happen when Araman completes this task? How would that appear? As they've already said, time doesn't really exist in the warp, so if Araman completes his task at some point in time, in the past, present, future, or somewhere in between, what would have happened? You would have these spirits in the warp 
that are completely uncorruptible and unmutatable. I believe they would manifest themselves as the Legion of the Damned, which actually makes sense because as you can see here, he keeps on saying he's trying to save his Legion. He's try and, and that would mean that after they're saved or when they're saved, but you can see what I'm saying. It's attached to being damned in some way, with the, rub the rubric being the curse, if you will. I think that's how it works. And the way GW seems to be approaching time travel in 40k is to simply say time does not exist. Therefore, time travel does not exist. This idea you could see if you if you like to read uh, in Elric of Molibony, you know the Stormbringer series by Michael Moorcock. You can also see the same thing in Roger Zelesny's uh, The Great Book of Amber series, where time just does not exist. If you want to look at a fractal physics explanation of this, think of it as a radio. Reality is a radio, and you're turning the, uh, the dial to get to different radio stations. Now, when you tune into a frequency of a radio station, you hear a broadcast. But does this mean that all of the other radio stations don't exist? That those broadcasts also do not exist at the same point in time on the same radio? It's just what you've tuned into. See what I'm saying? Look at reality in the same way. What you're experiencing now is a frequency of reality. That frequency of reality is everything that you perceive right now. But, it, uh, but you could also say that all other possibilities are happening at the same quote-unquote time and place. It's just a matter of what perceptual filter you have at the moment. So as you can see here, Ahriman has lived upwards of 9,000 mortal lives or more. I, I, how long is a mortal life in 40K? <laughs> that can depend. I mean, you've got people living upwards of 500 years. You've got Astarte living upwards of 1,200 years. Whatever it is, multiply it by 9,000. As you can see, that's going to be a lot of years. He doesn't care. That's how I believe they're going to approach time travel. And in the end, I think what's going to happen is the Emperor will simply say, you know what? The Primarch Project was a bad idea. Let's just get rid of it. And then you'll have the 40K universe without the Horus Heresy, without Primarchs, without gene seeds, without any of the legions being the gene children of certain Primarchs, wipe all of that out. And what do you have? Now, you might sit there and say, well, you just completely destroyed 40K. Have I really? Because you might be surprised, unless you've watched my Rogue Trader series, that the original 40K, first edition Rogue Trader, had no Primarchs. No Horus Heresy. Uh, humans were able to live in the galaxy with the other races, except for orcs. And orcs, however, only hated humans. Not everybody. Yeah, it was an orc-human war. Uh, Eldar were not a dying race. They were just a race. And they even lived on Imperium planets. Space Marines, they still existed. They simply were genetically modified super soldiers. Think of them like uh, the Thunder Warriors. Some people call them the precursors of the Space Marines, but I don't think they're a precursor. I just think they were something else. So imagine, well, it's like I was saying before, they're going to retcon back to first edition Rogue Trader. No Primarchs, no Gene Seeds, no Horus Heresy, 
No damnation of the galaxy, no chaos taking over everything. In fact, in Rogue Trader First Edition, uh, the warp is a place you could travel to. It had planets in it, you could walk around in it, you could have adventures in it. We're going back to that time, is what I believe. They're just going to chop all of the last 25 years out and say, Bing, hello everybody, Rogue Trader First Edition, enjoy. That's what I see coming. Um, ba -ba -bum. I'm sorry, I digress there a little bit. But next time we're going to be talking about Seeker of Impossible Knowledge, which I'm guessing is going to detail Araman's travels through the Eye of Terror for his 9,000 lifetimes. Until then, bye! <laughs>